welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Chris Moore, and in today's video, we got a 2016 GSXR 750. It's got 9,000 miles on it, super clean condition. Still has the factory air filter, no aftermarket air filter, and we just installed a M4 shorty slip on with a MJS Performance Cat Delete Pipe. So this makes a ginormous difference over the stock exhaust or over just having a slip-on exhaust with the catalytic converter. So you can see, normally we had the big cat down here, the big box. Well, all of that is gone now. We'll try to walk around here to the other side. I'm holding the tripod, so it's a little awkward. But anyways, you can see that we now have gotten rid of that and we have a mid pipe from MJS Performance. Now that mid pipe is very inexpensive, only like $160 or so for the mid pipe itself. And then it makes up to your already slip on or the slip on that you already have, or you can basically buy any other slip on to make it work. Now, whenever you do this, this does require a good bit of tuning. Um, the bike is designed to run with the catalytic converter from the factory and it has a lot more back pressure on it. Well, when you remove that back pressure, it does kill the lower end torque until we tune it. So when we flash the ECU and tune it, we open up the secondary throttle plates earlier and we give it a good bit more fuel to compensate for the catalytic converter being gone, the extra flow of air. Once we give it that balance, the horsepower really picks up. The sound really, really increases. A stock exhaust, I mean a slip-on with an aftermarket exhaust is fairly louder than just a stock exhaust pipe. So this really, really makes a big difference sound and performance-wise. Once you do this catalytic converter delete, you will have a check engine light uh, for the O2 sensor and stuff being gone. Well, when we do the flash to ECU, we are able to eliminate that code and turn that off to where you do not have a check engine light for the O2 sensor being gone, but your O2 sensor, or I'm not your O2 sensor, your check engine light still works for all the other codes the bike could throw in the future if it ever did have a problem. Now, not that this would cause a problem, but if it did, it still works. So I'm gonna fire it up. I have not touched the ECU yet. We're gonna run it. We're gonna get a baseline pull for what it has now. And then we're gonna see what it does after we flash and tune the ECU. Stay with us, guys.
wanted to take a quick second to show you exactly how we're going to be unrestricting this 750 and what we do to get more horsepower out of it. Instead of just showing you dyno numbers on the screen and the horsepower going up, we're going to show you why. So right here, this is secondary throttle plate opening, okay? And you can see we got mode A and we got gear one. So that's first gear on A mode, which is what you're always on. So these are your RPMs over here, 2,000 through 13,000. And then this is your throttle percentages, 16%, 30%, 60%, and so on. So this is a factory map. In other words, this is the untouched ECU. And you can see even at 100% throttle over here, we've got at, let's scroll down, let's just say 7,600, we're only at 62% throttle. So even though, switch hands, you're wide open with the throttle, the secondary throttle plates up here are not wide open matching what your throttle is giving it. So even though you're wide open, the secondary throttle plates are only at 62% at 7,600 RPMs. Then you can see going at, it goes to 94.5, which in the computer's eyes is 100%. And then at 13,000 RPMs, it cuts back to 7,800. Now, keep in mind on this bike from the factory, it redlines at 14.5. So basically the bike has a governor on it. So when you go wide open, the bike does not go wide open until it wants to, and then it decides it's gonna close back off. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna change it to, let's just say, fifth gear. So now you can see, same way, same way. It never opens the secondary throttle plates all the way up. So what we do is we open those up, we also open the exhaust valve on this thing a little sooner. Uh, if you have a slip-on exhaust, this stuff helps as well. Now you can see the exhaust valve basically stays open the whole time on this one. It does not close back off. Let's put it over here on gear one. Sorry, I, I'm trying to... I got three things to hold and only two hands. So anyways... You can see the exhaust valve. It is slow to open, but it does open and stay open. So we open that 100% of the time as well. So all these things really help with the low range horsepower and the overall horsepower itself. Now we also adjust the fuel tune on the bike for the exhaust system that you have and the cat delete. The ECU on this bike is located right there. I have a full tutorial on what you need, how to remove it, the tools you need, all that stuff in the YouTube channel, you can click on the link in the description below and it will take you straight to that. But for now, I just wanted to show you what we were doing, how we were getting more horsepower, and then basically you can decide whether you want to send your ECU in to see these gains for yourself as well. All right, guys, we're about to flash the ECU in this thing and get her all juiced up, ready to make some more power.
so we just finished up with the dyno run on the GSXR 750. We started out with 120.87 horsepower and 52 foot-pounds of torque. We ended up with 127 horsepower and 54 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see we've corrected the air fuel ratios, we've opened up the secondary throttle plates, and we got this thing running much, much better. So I'll pull my mouse over here and we will see the gains on the top end. So you can see we went from 118 to 125. Everywhere we got nice solid gains in torque and horsepower. Then when you scroll all the way down here to 5,000 RPMs, you go from 39 to 44 on the torque, 37 to 42 on the horsepower which is a big time noticeable difference. And then of course, we don't have a way to really measure horsepower through the mid range because of course, we're not always giving it the same throttle percentage or whatever, but much, 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 much more horsepower through the mid range and throttle percentage. Now, keep in mind too, we also did not dyno this bike with the stock catalytic converter. That would show even larger gain since we put the mid pipe ECU flash and dyno tune all together on this. So overall, not a bad deal. Uh, the customer got the slip on exhaust, which is under 400 bucks, the mid pipe, which is under 200 bucks, and a dyno tune, which is only $475. So he hasn't spent that much money and got really big gains. Plus two, his bike sounds a million times better. Much, much louder, much more throat and base to it so anyways overall very good money spent guys i hope you enjoyed the video be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so click the bell for further notifications once we post new videos you'll get that notifying you letting you know we got something new that just dropped all right guys smash that like button we do appreciate it it helps us out a lot and until next time, guys, we'll see you later.